Hey there, this is JR from Trades Killers Anonymous. Thanks so much for stopping by today. So this is approximately a six foot tall coffee hutch that I've built for someone. And the purpose of this video today is to talk about how I went about creating um, these raised panel doors uh, that are the front treatment on this particular unit. It's much easier than you might think it is. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to go through that today. Thanks for stopping in, let's get into it. All right, so the feature that we're gonna be talking about today is, so this whole carcass is made of Corson white oak, including the drawer fronts and cabinet doors. And uh, I wanted them to be a continuous panel, particularly in this uh, drawer front configuration, because I was really looking for a continuous grain. Um, you know, the stain I think obscures some of that, but this is really a nice feature that otherwise you need, um, in order to create it, you'd have to have a five panel door. So two styles, two rails in the center panel. And then you have to have the special equipment, which is, you know, router bits um, or a shaper that are gonna give you this effect here. In the but I really wanted to go for a special effect out of some um, hardwood panels, again, quarter saw and wide oak. So we're gonna dive into um, V-Carve and just show you how simple that is. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Okay, so we've made it back in from the shop. I've shown you what the final uh, project turned out like. I'm gonna show you now how I got there. And I'm gonna go through this um, really particularly fast. So this is gonna be done in V-Carve Pro 11.01. .01. And because we're gonna move uh, fast, what I'm going to suggest to you is maybe consider hitting the subscribe button down below. It will help you to come back and find the video again. Also, it'll let you know that we've, uh, you know, put out more videos in the future. Um, so the key element here is we're going to use the molding tool path with, within VCarve Pro. And our example uh, door is going to be, uh, tw let's see, 18 inches wide by 24 inches. So I'm going to just come over here to Vectric real quick. And again, you can pause this if I go too fast and um, too much of your time going through uh, the Vectric keystroke. So we're going to go and make this piece, you know, some random 32 by 32, three quarters of an inch uh, thick. We're going to first create the outside of our uh door panel which is as i mentioned 18 by 24. we're going to hit the create button and just for standard practice i'm going to make sure that we are centered on our workpiece and we're good to go so i still have this vector selected i'm going to come down to offset and layout which in my view is uh down on the bottom i'm going to make this make a new vector offset from the first two inches inward so hitting the offset button creates that first one by select new being checked. This new vector is selected. And now I'm going to make another one. And so now I have three vectors in there. Uh, so what's going to happen next is uh, I'm going to make a profile just so you can see the outside of the door. And we're going to cut through the material with a quarter inch end mill. Um, you're probably pretty used to seeing all this stuff. We're going to preview that, get rid of the waste, and now this is the general shape of our door. Okay, so having done that, we're going to come back to our workspace, our drawing workspace. So we really have an outside two inch border that would be the traditional rails and styles. Then the next two inch section is going to be where our profile lives our molding tool bath and then this larger inner panel section is going to be the flat part of the raised panel so what we need to do next is tell the computer program what it is that we want this profile to look like and there are a bunch of ways you could come in here uh, you know draw an arc and uh, you know make it some you know simple shape uh, and use that or you can do what I would typically do in a situation like this is, you know, go on the internet, find a profile that I like um, from maybe an existing raised panel design, which happens to be this one. 
Um, so I'm going to just zoom in here and get to work. So I have used the import of bitmaps as really just going on the computer, uh, Googling some images for raised panel doors. And that's how I came up with this. Once I have it selected, I'm going to do a trace bitmap. And just for speed, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to come in here and turn um, the number of colors down just because I want the general shape. I just want to know what this looks like in general. So I'm going to preview that, hit apply, and then close. And before anything else, I'm going to come up to my layer and I'm going to hit the little light bulb to turn off the bitmap layer because I don't really want to see that. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra junk just to get it out of my way because none of this is part of what we're going to do next. Now, Vectric has a very powerful feature called node editing. And so by hitting N on your keyboard and then selecting a vector, you now will see all the different points that your computer aided software is going to try to tell the machine it has to hit. And as you see on this kind of jaggedy looking import uh, that was done just off that rough, rough and quick view that I just gave you, there's a lot of probably unnecessary points in that. So I am in the node editing mode by hitting N. Normally you would see something that looks like this. So I highlight the profile, hit N on my keyboard, and now I'm going to use all shortcuts. Uh, with my mouse hovering over the span, and you can tell it's a span because it is between two black dots or a green dot is where it is going to start the machine process. So the only part of this that I want is from right here to right here. Everything else that's in this uh, imported image is not necessary. So I'm going to simply hover my mouse over that span, hit D on my keyboard to delete it. Same thing over here, over here, hitting D, I'm deleting, D, I'm deleting, coming back over here and deleting. Okay. And what I'll do is exit node editing mode. I'm just going to delete all that stuff, right? So this was the goal. This is the swoop or the profile that I needed in order to uh, make this raised panel, but it's not a very nice line. So we're going to do another operation here. We're going to come over here to Vectrix curve fit, which fits curves to selected vectors. So it's going to try to smooth all this out for us to give you a preview. I'm going to select this again, hit the end button, and you can see all the individual nodes. And there's a, just a ton of them in here because everywhere that there's a variation in the line and it's not straight, uh, or a gentle curve, it has to insert a new dot, if you will, or new node. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit node editing mode. We've got that vector selected. We're coming over to curve fit. And we're going to just use probably uh, Bezier curve with maybe a 50,000 tolerance. And again, you can play with all this um, at another time. Well, you see, as soon as I hit preview, it has kind of tried to mimic the best that it could the general shape of this curve. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hit M on my keyboard, and I'm going to move this down just a little bit first. I'm going to go back in a node editing mode and just show you that there is one, two, three, looks like three or four uh, nodes in this thing. It's very clean. Your machine is going to have no trouble understanding where it's got to go. By comparison, I'll select the first curve, and it is just a mess of nodes all over the place. So this is going to also decrease machine time, decrease computer time, um, because it doesn't have to work out that many points. So exiting node mode, I'm going to go back in and move come up here just because, you know, I'm not that artistic, so I need a little help um, getting there. Uh, I'm going to hit my N node, node editing mode again. And with my, I know I need to kind of mimic this curve. So I'm going to come in right about here. Excuse me, in N for node editing mode. I'm going to come right about here and hit the I key. And then I'm going to just drag that node that I just created. Now I've roughly uh, made that curve again. I'm 
going to come up here and guess that, you know, probably about there I need to add. So I'm going to hit I. Do I hit the right one? No, I need this one. I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to bring this guy up just a little bit. Okay, so now we've introduced only two more nodes into our vector. I'm going to move one out of the way. I'm going to hit N for node. So now this is the line that we just made. So we've added only a couple of nodes. We've really closely matched that, but made it much smoother. And this is the original one. You see all those nodes in there. So right click twice to ed exit node mode. I'm going to highlight that first janky vector and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard, get rid of it. So now this is the profile that's going to be followed. I'm going to move this over here a little bit closer. The last thing we need to do to this profile, remembering that we made a two inch span here off of our drive rail, we're going to come over to transform objects, set the object size, and I know for its width, I need to be two inches. So I'm going to come over here, hit two on the width, and I see that it has made the height or the depth of that cut 620 thousands. So I'm still within my material size. You might want to unlink the X and Y and maybe limit that to only half an inch or something so that you have a quarter of an inch of material at the lowest point. But Again, this is just for demonstration, so at least you know where to go. So I'm going to hit apply and accept that size. We are two inches wide, which is what we need. And now comes the now comes the money shot here. So we're going to come into our toolpath setup. We're going to go to molding toolpath. And real simply, we're going to select the drive rail, or I want this edge to be driven all the way around. Um, this material. So that's the first thing I do is select the drive rail and then I select the profile. And I can see that there's an issue, which is, it's fortunate that it came up. What I want you to pay attention to are these arrows here. Um, and the fact that the green dot is starting on the left, what we're going to want to do is to switch that, but I want to show you what it looks like so that in case you do this and it doesn't come out uh, as you expect it. So I'm just going to accept everything the way it is. You typically do this with something like a ball nose. Um, so I'm using a quarter inch ball nose here. I'm going to forget everything else in here and I'm just going to let it calculate that. We will preview the visible tool path. And at first glance, you might think, oh, it looks okay. But in reality, it has cut it in the opposite direction. It has started over here and come down towards the center. And that is not what we want. We want it to cut in the other direction. It's a super simple fix for that. We'll go back into our uh, we'll go back into our molding tool path. And with our uh, mouse over the profile itself, we're going to right click on the profile. We're going to say reverse direction. And now you see that this green dot, which is where the cutting starts, has come over to the high side. And that is where we want it, up against this drive rail. Just visually, I want you to represent yourself, uh, represent this in your mind as this drive rail is where we want that tool path to start. And now it should cut in the opposite direction. But let's calculate and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to reset this preview. I'm going to preview all tool paths. We're going to get rid of the excess over here. And in this case now, what you can see is that we have created it where the high side of this profile is toward the center and it falls away um, towards the outside of the door. One other quick thing that we could do to give you a visual representation of that, let's draw a box. We're going to cut this part in half and just give you a view. Yeah, we're, yep, everything's good. Calculate that. You wouldn't normally want to do this um, with your raised panel, but for demonstration purposes, I want to essentially virtually cut it in half and then just show you that um, this is the profile that we drew is right here. 
we need the high side starting up on the raised center panel and then it falls away to a depth um uh, you know that i think is what you'd be looking for so hey just to wrap up what i would tell you is there's a lot of traditional woodworking that went into this particular piece it's going to be used as a coffee hutch um, and I was just excited to think about how to dress it up and give it, you know, this raised panel uh, frontage, if you will, without having to buy, you know, hundred or more dollars worth of uh, raised panel router bits. Because frankly, I don't do a lot of this type of work, um, but I had a CNC sitting here with the right bits and just had to use a little bit of creative thinking to use the tools I already had in order to do something um, otherwise done with more traditional means. So um, do me a favor down in the comments, tell me something that you've done recently with your CNC machine to up your woodworking or furniture game. And hey, while you're down there, I wouldn't mind if you hit the subscribe button. It certainly helps me to grow the channel and I would appreciate it. And if you found something useful in this video, please feel free to give it a like while you're there. Thanks so much and have a great day.